I'm here at Heathrow Airport Terminal 5 in London and today I'm going to be taking a ride on the newest member of the British Airways fleet, the Airbus A350. I'm heading down to Madrid and back to take a ride on the new club suite. Now just like all of my videos I've paid for this completely myself, it's not a promotional video for British Airways in any way shape or form, it's just going to be an honest review of the A350 as I find it. So with that aside let's head inside to Terminal 5 and head to Madrid and back on the British Airways Airbus A350. I actually left it pretty late for today's flight. After staying at the nearby Thistle Hotel, I woke up at 5am for a 6.20 flight, so it was straight through fast track security and across to the sea pier where the brand new A350 was waiting. Today's aircraft had been delivered to British Airways less than a week before my flight, and mine was just her seventh commercial flight. It's being used exclusively on the Madrid flights for the first month to allow all the crew to get experience flying on board. The flight was already on final call by the time I made it to the gate, so I headed straight down the jet bridge onto the brand new aircraft. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Hi, morning. Welcome. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you, sir. Good. What am I? Uh, yeah, wonderful. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to be going across and right. Thank yeah. you. Left even. <laughs> left. <yeah. laughs> morning. You're right. The club suite is a new concept of BA and is the first business class seat for the airline that has a sliding door. I'll give you a full tour of the seat later in the video. Seeing a front row seat or an emergency exit row, the floor area must be completely clear for takeoff. Once your handbag is safely stowed, then please make yourselves comfortable and keep the aisles clear for. The club suites also offer a full three point seat belt, which is necessary due to the angle of the seats. The shoulder strap has to be fastened for takeoff and landing, but for the rest of the flight, just the lap belt will suffice. A very good morning ladies and gentlemen and a very warm welcome to those who have just joined us. Welcome on board this British Airways flight to Madrid on our brand new A350 aircraft. Hope you're able to make yourselves comfortable on board our uh, uh, shiny new uh, Airbus A350. I'm very pleased to say that uh, all the passenger doors are closed. I'm just waiting for one cargo door to close now and then we should be ready to get underway. The service on the Madrid flights is Club Europe rather than Club World but this still offers a really nice three course meal. I opted for the full English breakfast, which is always nice on BA. Before long the seatbelt sign came on, the doors were closed and we began our pushback. If the cabin air supply fails, oxygen will be provided. Masks. The safety demonstration is done manually on the A350, for now at least. This is because there's separate instructions for the new club suites that aren't mentioned in the existing video, so I imagine the video will come as soon as it's been updated. We had a short taxi out to runway 27 left. Heathrow isn't too busy this early in the morning, so you don't generally have to queue for too long. Pretty soon though, it was time to go. Our route down to Madrid this morning took us southwest over the Isle of Wight, down across the Channel Islands and Brittany, before crossing the Bay of Biscay into Spain. Flight time today was 1 hour 55 minutes at a cruising altitude of 41,000 feet.
drinks were served soon after takeoff and I chose an orange juice. So here's what we've all been waiting for, let's take a look around the new British Airways Club Suite. My first impressions were that it's actually really dark and it feels really claustrophobic, even more so with the door closed. The door is locked by the crew for takeoff but can be slid shut in flight. It offers a little more privacy but to be honest the suites are pretty private anyway even with the door open and I wonder if the door will cause more problems than it solves. Less than a week into service and already there were suites that had doors that wouldn't lock open or that slid open when they'd been closed and the passenger in front of me had to be reseated because the seat can't be occupied with a faulty door. There's a huge 18 inch TV screen which offers some great in flight entertainment, I'll go through that on the way back to London later in the video. The table unclips and pulls towards you down these exposed rails. The draw rails combined with the fake wood effect left me wondering if this suite had been designed by IKEA. One thing that the club suite does offer above the original seat is a lot more storage. There's a cubby hole down by your feet as well as more storage around the seat. The forward storage compartment contains the remote control for the TV as well as various power options. There's a 3 pin power outlet for laptops or phones and two USB ports, the first one at the front offering a powerful charge and the one at the back offering a trickle charge for smaller devices. The headphone port is also in here. Behind this compartment is another storage compartment. At the back of the seat there's a pop out mirror that's quite nice but other than the mirror you can't really fit anything in here. Perhaps BA had a surplus of buttons and just wanted to put an extra one in just because they could. There's a personal reading light above your head in addition to the ones in the ceiling. Magazines and a guide to the club suite are up here in the top. One thing I really like is the little screen allowing you to control the seat position. This is very similar to the screens on the WestJet 787. If you've not seen that video already please do go ahead and check it out. BA have gone for the cheaper option of manual sliding window blinds compared to the nice electric folding blinds offered on some other airlines such as Qatar Airways. I decided to try out the flatbed to see if it was as tight as it looked. It was. So in the life flat position the bed is actually really cramped. I mean it's not too bad at the head end but the feet are, I can't even lay straight in this. Um, I'm 6'3", 6'4", and most of the time I can lay pretty much flat even though with my head being right at the back here. On this though I'm having to bend my legs and there's not even that much room to bend my legs down there so it is pretty cramped. I do hear that the seats in the back bit of the cabin are a little bit more spacious. There's not quite as many in there but it's not brilliant I have to say. The forward club world cabin is huge. There's 11 rows of suites here. In the rear section there's a further three rows with the bulkhead looking slightly more spacious than the rest of the seats. I did find the aisles very narrow too, maybe it's just a perception due to the high walled suites but it seems very tight and I wonder if this will cause any issues with accessibility, be it for larger passengers or indeed those just needing a little more room. Breakfast came around pretty soon and I took the full English breakfast. Meals are something that BA do incredibly well in Club Europe. Food wise I'd say BA's European business class is one of the best in Europe. BA's A350s are the first aircraft in the fleet to offer Wi-Fi as standard. It is however pretty expensive. The smallest package starts at £5 for just 25 meg of data and the largest is a whopping £18 that gets you just 150 meg. That said the speed is fairly impressive, I was able to get a download speed of 30 meg with a decent upload speed of 3 meg too. With just 150 meg of data though at this speed you'll get through it in no time whatsoever, especially when they start sending this aircraft on the longer flights. BA don't offer a sit down or stand up bar in Club World on the A350 like some other airlines do in business class, but there's a self serve bar in the forward galley where on the longer flights you'll be able to help yourself to a range of drinks and snacks. I thought this display by the door was pretty cool, it indicates to the cabin crew which passengers have pressed the call bell. Pretty soon we were commencing our approach down into the Spanish capital of Madrid.
we touched down right on time and taxied into Terminal 4S, the satellite pier of Terminal 4, which is where all non-Schengen One World flights leave from. Hope that you have enjoyed your flight on our new A350 aircraft. I look forward to welcoming you back again very soon. Once again, thank you and a very good morning to you all. Cabin crew, thank you very much. Doors to manual, a correction, doors to disarm and cross-check, please. Alright, so we have now landed in Madrid and I've got about an hour to make my way through the terminal and get back to this very same aircraft to head straight back to Heathrow. Or later. <laughs> right, you are. You'll see me in a couple of minutes. In a couple of minutes. Run <laughs> see you later. Later. Thank, Thank you. See you in a bit. I had less than an hour to get through the connections channel and back to the aircraft at the gate, which is fairly easy to do at T4S, although you don't have much time to hang around. Hello. You just head straight to the connections channel for the S gates, which takes you through a quick security checkpoint, and then you're right back in the departure lounge. I even had time to pick up a bottle of sangria in duty free. I headed straight down to the gate where boarding hadn't yet started. The beautiful A350 was still standing right where I left her. Invitamos a los pasajeros prioritarios del Grupo 1 a embarcar por la línea de prioridad. Hola. Gracias. Nine. Nine K, so you're going to Straight through. Thank you very much. And that, I even had time for duty free. So. Excellent. How did you manage that? Hello, there you are. This time I was sitting a couple of rows forward in 9K. Row 9 offers a slightly improved view of the engine than rows 10 and 11. I made it and back on board the BAA 350 straight back to Heathrow. Once your hand baggage is safely stowed, please make yourselves comfortable and keep the aisle clear for all remaining customers to board. There were a few more trip reporters and vloggers on the return flight to London, many of whom had come out on the day before. Before long we pushed back to get back in the air to London. Madrid was pretty busy this morning and we had quite a queue to take off, however, eventually we lined up and powered up once more to get in the sky. Our route back to the UK took us north into the Bay of Biscay before crossing Brittany and the English Channel and descending over the City of London into runway 27 right at Heathrow. Flight time back to the UK was 1 hour and 51 minutes at a cruising altitude of 40,000 feet. The flight back to London had a lunch service which today was a choice of cod, risotto or chicken salad. The in-flight entertainment system on the A350 is great. There's a huge choice of movies, TV and box sets to watch, as well as music. You can order duty free through the screen as well. The moving map is pretty good and offers a wide range of views. 
One other area, however, where BA have taken the cheap option is the ability to watch the tail camera with outside views of the aircraft. Lots of other airlines with the A350 take this option, and the aircraft has a camera built in already to serve the flight deck, but it's an extra option to feed it to the in-flight entertainment that BA didn't pay for. The more I sat on this aircraft, the more I noticed little things which felt really cheap and plasticky. The grills, for example, in the footwell, which were made of a really thin plastic and bent with the slightest bit of pressure. The footrest seemed to be broken or, at the very least, very flimsy and flexes whenever you rest your foot on it. The club suite door is also quite thin, leaving it feeling really cheap, especially with the strange carpet on the back of the door that looks like it's come from the leftover carpet scraps after BA's last office refurb. Between the seat and the wall, BA have skipped a nice piece of plastic trim in favour of some cheap polystyrene which doesn't fit particularly well and once again looks pretty cheap. I imagine it won't be long before it looks filthy and you're boarding to find empty crisp packets and stale peanuts down the back. This is a shame because the cabin does on the surface look very smart. They've made a real effort to make this a stylish, understated cabin, and it could have been really nice, like Qatar Airways or Singapore Airlines A350 cabins, had it not felt quite so cheap. It was soon time for lunch, and I ordered the cod. This was really nice, and again part of BA's excellent European business class menu. I noticed a rogue piece of blue packing tape still attached to the seat, which of course I had to pull off. How often do you get to take the packaging strips off a brand new airliner seat? As we commenced our descent, the crew came around to lock the suite doors open again and we descended across southern England towards London. The approach was as usual spectacular and we saw the whole of London skyline as we descended into Heathrow. down on schedule and taxied into the sea pier at Terminal 5. We parked on C65, just one gate down from where we'd left earlier in the day. After a round trip of over 1400 miles to Madrid and back, I was back in London just in time for lunch. I'm pretty torn about the BA A350. On the one hand, you can't deny that the A350 is one beautiful aircraft. It really looks the part and offers one of the most comfortable and quiet cabins on the market. You can't deny that BA's club suites are a massive step up from the ancient club world cabin fitted to most of their other long haul aircraft. There's more storage, more power options, and they finally got rid of that ottoman. The door is a nice gimmick, but in reality it doesn't seem to offer much more privacy than the suites have anyway. There seems to be less space both in terms of length and width, and I struggle to get a good night's sleep on that bed. There's no room to lay straight and no room to lay sideways either. The seat also feels incredibly cheap and plasticky, and with the lack of little extras like the electric blinds, external cameras and a bigger bar area, it's clear that BA have taken the base model. I get that this is a way to save on both cost and weight, and crucially it lets BA cram as many people as possible into the aircraft, but sadly all this leaves BA looking pretty cheap compared to the likes of Qatar Airways and Singapore Airlines. That said, I'd probably still take the A350 over almost any other aircraft in the BA fleet for long-haul flights, with the exception of perhaps the 747 for nostalgia reasons, especially if I didn't need to sleep. The extra storage and power is really useful and the in-flight entertainment is excellent too. So back here then at Heathrow Airport after a really cool couple of flights down to Madrid and back on the Airbus A350 with British Airways. 
Let me know what you think to the A350 down in the comments section below. But in the meantime, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time here on In Flight Video.